Welcome to the breakdown where we break down all the messed up shit. Today we are going to South Korea for the first time since I saw the devil. Well, this came out around the same time, and it details a woman named Haewon who leaves the annoying mainstream life of Seoul for a week vacation on Mudo Island, a strict island housing the family of Haewon's childhood friend, Bok Nam. It becomes pretty clear though that life on this island can be a pretty psychologically damaging experience, especially when the people around you are either toxic or damaging. If you want to see what happens, including all the messed up parts, stay tuned for the breakdown. Cue to Gohan. The movie starts off with a radio show or something like that. An announcer is basically recounting a joke about vegetarians. The woman listening, Haewon, is interrupted as she sees a sickening conflict going on outside her car. How can you call yourself a man and hit on a woman like this? Not even Su Yoon's Korean fried chicken pieces were as physical as that. This is why we need n****s like Kiryu. The assaulted woman runs desperately looking for help, but Hey Won decides to ignore her by rolling up the window. The next day at work, Hey Won is a bank worker who accepts the request of loans, stuff like that. This elderly woman desperately needs a loan or she'll be ass out without a home. Hey Won ignores her request by offering less and shouts at her loud as hell, attracting attention. She literally even leaves after she gets a phone call. My first job was working at a place like Chuck E. Cheese, but with more physical games. And anybody working in retail or stuff like that knows fully that they would love to let loose on some customers like how Hey Wan did here, but we would have been fired in a heartbeat. Hey Wan needed to get her ass fired from acting like that. Hey Wan drives to her destination, but gets a call from someone really close. It could be her mom or something, but she hangs up just as quick. The place she was going to was the police station because she's been identified as being able to show that she witnessed the assault last night and saw the men clearly. Her ass lying, talking about she didn't see the men clearly. Helen Keller would have saw them men clearly. Her guilty conscience makes her give the authorities one detail though, the fact that one of the men had a skull ring. Warning, bloodied assaulted victim photo ahead. The police show that might be decisive, but the wounds are inconclusive. After, she tells the police don't call her back and walks back to the car. I f***ing hate Haywon, I'm selfish ass. Now you got two leftovers from a sick experiment released back into public. Soon, presumably the father of the beaten girl runs out towards them, shouting that they are guilty and such, but the man also sees Haywon and begs for her to admit she surely saw them. This uproar just lets the men know what little piggy came in to squeal on them. See, this is where you f up. It, you, you don't just run the ass over and you didn't even lock the door. How are you gonna be selfish and stupid? They just threaten her, but even then, she tells the police that she didn't want to talk. I don't understand her big deal about being so uninvolved. I mean, it's not like she didn't want to snitch or something. It just seemed like she just didn't want to care. Back at work, she discovers her colleague has helped the old lady by giving her the loan she needed. Angered, Haewon tells her off by implying that she should stay in her place, and that being all flirty with the manager won't save you from messing up. She does feel bad about it though, I'm not gonna front, but <coughs> there are a lot worse things to feel bad about. <laughs> so she texts her coworker an apology and asks him to get drinks but notices her co-worker actually outside of the bathroom stall. Once she's ready to get out, she notices she can't get out cause a stick is blocking the door. Her ass had to tune raider her way out of the stall, just ending up breaking her shoes and looking more like she was getting busy in that bathroom. She leaves mad as hell, and as soon as she sees her colleague, she slaps her in front of the whole office. But to her surprise, she judged too quickly, cause this janitor lady, wearing the same shoes as her coworker, was the one who accidentally left the stick on the bathroom door. Makes a lot more sense, huh? The boss brings her in and suspends her from the job, telling her to take a vacation. <laughs> uh, that's it, sir? I mean, I think I can speak for all of us working in retail type jobs that if I yelled at an old lady, I would have been fired on the spot. And trust me, there is plenty of times where I would have loved to yell. She soon gets home and I admit, she is not admirable to me at all. Spoiler alert, I mean, she, she bad as hell, but ignoring assault? 
Lying about the perps, shouting in anger, that's whack. But you gotta notice, she's just having bad things happen to her right after. If only that happened more in real life. Okay, I'm done shitting on her for now. The superintendent delivers her letters since she left her box filled up. Looking through, she notices many letters from someone named Bok Nam, but she purposefully throws them away. All night long, she considers her situation while drinking can upon can of beer. It hits her though that perhaps she should visit the island where she grew up, Mudo Island. It's also where her old friend, Bok Nam lives. She gets on a boat to visit Mudo Island, and she was quite popular in that area she grew up in. Even a boat driver recognizes her. We cut to a flashback of Heiwan and her lonely friend, Bok Nam. This flute is a very powerful prop of their friendship, at most for Bok Nam. A cool transition reveals Bok Nam's tan ass happy at her old friend's arrival. I love that tan and that energy, but later we'll learn that excitement is not just cause she's seeing an old friend. Also, just for clear thoughts, she is the one who was sending the letters that hate one trash, just so y'all know. She takes her friend through the little area they live at, meeting all the old grandmas who work with the crops, treating her like she's Queen Elizabeth III. Also, here's Man Jong, Bok Nam's husband, and her brother-in-law, Chul Jong. This grouchy woman is the mother of Man Jong, but I'll just call her Aunt. She scorns Bok Nam for referring to her husband the wrong way. Yes, without a doubt, the husband, Man Jong, he was staring a lot, wasn't he? Bok Nam takes her back to the house they grew up in, sharing memories, stuff like that. Also, this is Bok Nam's daughter, Yeon Hee. She's shy now, but she'll open up later. She also didn't go to school, cause both the old woman and the men don't believe she should. Later during the family dinner, Man Jong, the husband, says he's going night fishing with the daughter, Yeon Hee. Bok Nam says, one snide little comment though, and the husband looks at her like he's ready to stone her. She avoids any consequence this time, but the brother-in-law, Chul Jong, he's looking at his sister-in-law more than he needs to. The reason why is when the father and daughter go fishing, the brother-in-law is having sex with his brother's wife. I believe it's fair to say it's rape, considering what info we find out later on. Regardless, if she doesn't do what she is told, she's gonna be punished. Once the husband and daughter are back, he becomes annoyed by his interpreted disrespect from her. He locks the door to beat her as the daughter sits aware, eating fruit. On the island, or at least this community here, the women feel entirely dependent on the men, even saying stuff like, even 12 of us couldn't do that. Well, I mean, y'all are a bunch of walking statues, so I understand, I guess. But still, it takes a real insecure snake to be beating on women all the time for the littlest of shit. It all goes back to insecurity and allowance. The aunt is especially critical of female roles here, and bullies Bok Nam especially. She reminds me of Ruth from The Girl Next Door. She is surely saying stuff that Ruth would say regarding women and sex. It seems new as if Bok Nam is really questioning her life on the island as soon as Haewon arrived, but it's just new to us. Later, the two old friends take a bath, but Bok Nam, I don't know, maybe she feels some kind of way about Haewon. They play in the water together like a bunch of kids though. A flashback later might support her feeling attracted to her friend. The next day, Heiwan is exploring the island. The brother-in-law shows up though and awkwardly inches closer to her, first giving her a leaf the men chew on. She spits that out, but the man's intentions seem nasty as hell. Before he could attempt to do something weird, the daughter Yeon Hee interrupts and unwarily scares her uncle away. She asked Hey Won if she could fold her textbooks, all except this social studies one. The social studies one was saved by Bok Nam because it talks about Seoul, where Hey Won lives. Meanwhile, Bok Nam's husband is having rough sex with this prostitute. While Bok Nam is binging on food and being ridiculed for sitting there while the sex is right behind her. As soon as Hey Won and her daughter come through, she makes it quick to send them both away. Later though, this is the prostitute. It seems she was paid for and brought to the island just for that. Their conversation reveals that Bok Nam actually tried to leave the island once. She offers that she escapes with her, but her daughter is what's holding her back. She didn't want to hurt her daughter's need of a father. Bok Nam later ignores her husband, 
very daringly, but he sabotages her honey gathering and gets her attacked by bees. He even has the nerve to throw a brick at her, and it probably hurt just as much as she did get hit by it because of all the bee stings. I've never been stung by a bee before, but I'm sure it hurts even after. Later, Hewan lectures her friend about the toxic family dynamic they have, but broadly. She says stuff implying a need to take care of yourself and not be a pushover, kinda ignoring how tied up Bok Nam really is. Also, Bok Nam does hint at the want to come back to Seoul with her friend. I just really wish she didn't feel reliance on Hewan of all people. But considering everybody we've seen so far, Hewan is probably the best person, so I understand. And that's saying something. Later, Bok Nam looks through the laundry but discovers her daughter's underwear in her husband's pockets. She looks for her daughter, seeing her applying makeup products on. She asks what she's doing, and her daughter says she wants to be loved by Papa. Even worse, the father is the one who gave her the makeup. He hears them conflicted and kicks his wife on the floor hard enough to make her bleed, then tells her to get out. And just so you know, that's not all he said. He was saying some really nasty, awful stuff. As she leaves, he disgustingly gropes on his daughter. Such sickness. If my grandma was here, she would repeatedly call his type a dirty dog. Whoa, whoa, hold on. Do y'all feel that energy? That malice? It feels so extraordinary. Like, literally, please commit murder now. Well, dang it. At least not yet. Later that night, Hewan discovers she's been fired from her job. Bad and good, cause now she feels that she's able to turn a new leaf. While she packs to get on the boat, she discovers an odd Bok Nam contemplating a few feet away. She soon sees the wounds on Bok Nam's face. She begs to come to Seoul with her, along with her daughter, but she says no, not yet. Bok Nam straight up is like, my husband is literally trying to screw my daughter, if not already. But Haewon accuses her of lying. Um, Haewon, knock knock, are, are you good up there? Why would she lie about that? So she just got a head injury for no reason? Even just the abuse alone is a good enough reason to leave with her friend, yet Haewon ignores it. Later, Haewon asks why Yeon He wants her breast to grow. She says, that's how women are loved. When asked how her father loves her, she replies like a flirty little girl. Well, I guess she is that. Soon the aunt comes and has Yan He dragged away. The aunt conflicts Haewon, saying stuff like Bok Nam is just a beggar. And also, Yan He isn't actually the husband's daughter. So, in other words, Yan He is Bok Nam's daughter, but not related to the husband. Even still, that's gross. He's a sex predator. Later, again, we see Bok Nam stealing money from her husband's pockets. Money that should actually be in her pocket, considering all her hard work. She's beginning to attempt to escape again. And yes, she has lost all reliance on Hei Wan. She instead calls that prostitute to help her escape. Later that night, she slept with one eye open. Once everybody is asleep, she grabs her daughter and they get ready to run away to the mainland. At first, her daughter didn't want to go, but after realizing her mom would be abused forever, she thinks it's the best idea to leave this island for good. Also, here comes the boat with the prostitute on it. She gives the boat driver the money, right when the husband realizes what's going on and pops up. The boat driver won't leave though until he has counted all of the money. He is definitely in cahoots with the husband. Ultimately, Bok Nam's escape attempt is foiled. She is dragged through the area, being beaten, which is being instigated by the aunt. Also, the prostitute is dragged away by the mute uncle and possibly raped off screen. It's the last we see of her too. Things get pretty hectic. Even the father beats his daughter for interfering. In an argument with all the old women, Bok Nam reveals she shouldn't have to be so submissive. She doesn't even know who the father of her daughter is because she was raped by multiple men. When Yon He tries to stop the vicious beating, he pushes her away, but she falls and hits her head on a rock, killing her. Even worse, he doesn't even really care, saying she'll be alright with some bean paste. This is a pretty emotional part of the movie, as everybody circles around watching Bok Nam cry in pain. I don't think I've seen a scene such as this throughout. 
Why am I lying? I was finna say, I was finna say, I don't think I've seen a scene like this. Why am I lying? This next scene probably pissed off everybody who watched. An investigator comes regarding the death, but everybody lies about what occurred, trying to place the blame on Bulk Nam, even lying about Yon He as she lays dead in the next room. Hey Won says that she was asleep the whole time, and Bulk Nam reacts broken and sad. Hey Won then tries to catch the boat back to the mainland, literally stepping on her friendship with Bulk Nam. The old ladies even tell her what she should be doing, consoling her friend. Them old ladies are whack as hell, and they got the right idea. Later, Bok Nam fixes some food for Hei Wan, and the brother-in-law delivers it to her. However, really, he drugged it. He breaks into her room to check and assaults her until Bok Nam comes in. She has a weapon though. Without a doubt, their relationship is broken. If this happened before all the conflict, then Bok Nam would have been more angry. We cut to another flashback. It connects to that naughty little event with Bok Nam and Hei Wan in the bath. Hei Wan plays the flute again, but also playfully kisses Bok Nam. Soon some boys, yeah even this dude can't even stand up right, like <laughs> come on dude, they, they all decide to bully the girls. Hei Wan runs and hides, and Bok Nam is knocked down by the boys. The boys then seem to poke around at her body, and possibly they lifted some of her clothes up too. That must have been a dream, cause Hei Wan wakes up vomiting cause of the drugs. In the meantime, Bok Nam is busy still being disrespected and forced to do all of the crop work. But, but can you feel it? Don't y'all feel that powerful energy? It speaks out to Bok Nam, gaining her attention towards the sky. This energy is the power of original all-powerful Jennifer Hills speaking to her, telling her, you don't need to take this bullshit. You ain't got shit to lose. Brutalize everybody and make them all suck it. The annoying grandmas can feel it too. First, she goes to get an unwelcome drink of water, grabs a sickle, and kills one of the old ladies as they watch. This old man is like some mute sick man. Wikipedia says he has Alzheimer's. She then murders another woman crawling away. She skips the old man and goes for the last woman, saying, I ain't gonna hold back. She's using the words that they told her before she got started working on the crops. Y'all can't tell me that's not Jennifer Hills influencing her. The aunt discovers the bloodshed and hides in the field all night long to escape from her eventual death. The next morning, Bok Nam readies and sharpens her murdering tools, taking scissors right to the old man, but she just gives him a fresh ass cut. She stops though cause she hears Hei Wan screaming, who is grabbed by the paranoid Un. Bok Nam creeps on him though, knocking Hei Wan's ass out. They knew what they was doing with this part, cause now the elegance surrounding Bok Nam is eerie, almost Michael Myers like as she chases for the Un. Anyway, she chases her to the edge of a cliff. Can you f***ing Sparta kick this bitch off now? Oh well, never mind. she'd rather die by her own hand. Bok Nam looks over like, damn, she ain't gonna be in the- <laughs> Bok Nam looks over like, damn, she ain't gonna be in Bedevil too. Just kidding, she just said, you should've wore your glasses, auntie. Next, Bok Nam goes towards the brother-in-law. He gropes her unaware of what she really has in store for him. She slowly uses the sickle to decapitate him and holds his head by the hair like it's a lantern. She has a witness though, Hei Wan. Bok Nam decides to just trail her behind. Without a doubt, I do feel like Bok Nam is going to murder Hei Wan. Meanwhile, the husband and the boat guy just got back from a business trip, discover the head. And right before Bok Nam can attack him, he dodges because of interference from Hei Wan. Long story short, she loses this battle and is tied up and brought back to the home to be beaten by the husband, this time in front of Hei Wan. The husband blames Bok Nam for all the abuse, saying she never reached out to him or cared. The best thing Hei Wan has done so far in this entire movie is threaten to call the police if he kills her, but he just takes her hostage. Bok Nam, she ain't afraid of dying no more, and does something very Jennifer Hills like. She pretends to reach out to him, calling him honey, and licks all over his fingers in a way he has never felt before. 
but that's just the rules. She bites his finger hard as hell, hard as she can, grinding on that shit too. Angered, he goes to grab an axe, but she turns out to be more crafty and stabs him using her mouth holding the blade. With the winning edge, she grabs the sickle and brutalizes his body post-mortem. This is all while Heiwan is running away with the bow driver to leave the island. She does what the usual I spit on your gravers do, use her opponent's words against them. Remember when the husband said that the daughter just needed some bean paste? Well she says it to him too, and bean paste she gives him. I think it's bean paste, I don't know. Meanwhile, the boat runner and Heiwan are running fast as hell. I've seen people run away from Godzilla with less fear. Ultimately, Heiwan ends up leaving the man behind, and both now, leaving the man to be massacred underwater like Jason's down there. So that was the end of the island massacre. We get one last view of the husband's body before it fades to black. Sometime later, possibly days, or perhaps even the next day, a boat is called to the island. This time, it was Bok Nam who called them, but she kinda looks like a clown, I'm not gonna lie. She's ready to leave the island behind and goes towards Seoul, but not just because she wants to turn a new leaf after murdering everybody. This is her first time leaving the island ever, and she soon arrives in the mainland, looks around in an awkward daze as she's pointed towards Seoul. A revelation she has is how there are actual kind people here. However, an even bigger, true revelation is in our midst. If you remember the day that the daughter died, you remember what we saw. As if we were also on the island, looking as Bok Nan was being punished and her sad emotional response. What we didn't see was Bok Nam's point of view. What Bok Nam saw was Hei Wan watching secretly before hiding away. If you remember during the questioning, Heiwon lied, saying she was asleep the whole time. That's why Bok Nam was so distressed hearing that. At first I thought, I mean, well that sucks, but why does it suck that much for you, Bok Nam? You just can't rely on her. Now we see Heiwon's selfish ass didn't want to be involved with her own friend's struggle. It looks like Bok Nam is murdering an old friend next. In Bok Nam's eyes, it's time for her punishment. Heiwan is still resting in some kind of police place. It's possible they aren't in Seoul yet. She wakes up discovering that she has handcuffs on and sees Bok Nam hiding in the corner. She runs out and sees a murdered police officer in locked doors. A struggle happens right in the room, but Bok Nam seems like Jason now or something. She ain't going down easy at all, so Heiwan has to hide inside a cell. While looking for the keys, she also sees the flute that actually united them as friends and brings that too. After giving it to her, Bok Nam is suddenly shot by the officer who is actually still alive and then shot again in the side. As a response, she uses the sledgehammer and punishes his balls, then one last hit on the head. She crawls over with her last strength and unlocks the door, but right before she kills her old friend, Heiwan stabs her in the neck with a broken flute. Slowly she falls to the ground, but it wasn't enough to take her out just yet. But it's a matter of time. She lays on her friend's lap, requesting her to play one last song that she used to play when they were kids. Heiwan is finally moved now, not acting unfriendly towards someone who always cared. She's moved enough to where she caresses her and is shocked when her friend finally succumbs to her injuries. All right, first of all, rest in peace to the homegirl Bok Nam. Like, clap that up. Clap up Bok Nam's name. Rest in peace to the homegirl Bok Nam. That day forward, Heiwan emerges as a changed person, no longer selfish or uninvolved. She goes back to the police station and points out the three men from the beginning, even at the threat of death. Once she gets home, the trauma of the past makes her take a drenching with her clothes on. She later grabs Bok Nam's letters out of the trash. Each one of those letters asks for help and assistance. Without a doubt, Bok Nam knew her friend ignored those letters. As she realizes this probably could have all been avoided, she lays down, fading into the island where lives came to an end because one woman was bedeviled her whole life, even by her own lost hope called Hei Wan. So I'm sure y'all noticed I was shitting on Hei Wan a lot, which is weird. I haven't really shit on a character this hard since Jeff from Hard Candy. 
I'll explain why in that spooky stuff, but I'm gonna say straight out that, hey, Juan, you got a lot of work to do. While you laying your little wet ass on the floor, you better be thinking about becoming a humanitarian. Think about giving back to people. Cause these whack ass fundamental behaviors like selfishness and the such, it's, that's what fuels all evil. Shit, while you over here ignoring your friend, y'all could have escaped together and been riding Porsches in the rain. But nah, you only care for yourself. Which I think is one of, if not, the worst quality somebody can really have. Get it fixed. Anyway, now that we got through with the true I spit on your grave deja vu, let's talk about the most disturbed moment and most enjoyable moment in that spooky stuff. Cue to go on. So first back to what I was saying, hey one was not getting a break from my verbal assault. However, I don't usually talk bad about dislikable people. Like, I didn't talk so bad about the ultimate depravity from Silo, or the director enemy from a Serbian film. The reason why I was a bit more vocal about Heywon was because her personality overshadowed what she does. They certainly go hand in hand, sure, but at the end of the day, Heywon isn't the director from a Serbian film. She isn't some depraved child molester. She is just, she is just still a relatively normal citizen. Movies try so hard to shove these disturbing acts and their disturbing vile characters in our face, yet I get more annoyed seeing how a basic ass woman turns a blind eye to so much unfairness. And that's because of the fact that Hei Wan isn't like those sick villains. Her fundamental selfishness just pissed me off far worse than some sick killer or abusive husband for some reason. But this is all just my view. Okay, but let me get off her. Let me get off her. That's the last time I'm talking about Hit One on this channel. Probably. The most disturbing moment is for me, probably Bulk Nouns breakdown the day the daughter died. She had me mute as hell seeing her react to her daughter's death. The only person she truly did love. I respect anybody that's trying to leave an abusive relationship along with their kids, especially when they put their kids' safety above their own, like Bulk Nam did. So without a doubt, Boknam is a platinum character on the channel up there with Jennifer Hills. I don't care what anybody says. The most enjoyable moment is when Boknam looked forward and <laughs> looked forward to the sun and realized she had nothing left to lose, then went on killing everybody. Films like these always make a final justice served look satisfying, but never in real life, honestly. And yeah, Boknam lost it. But you can't expect someone to be abused and raped for years on top of years, kill everybody, and then expect her to pick up Thor's hammer Mjolnir at the end of the day. It, and that's it's not gonna happen. And that's it. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I do think y'all should watch it yourself. Oh, hey, hey, don't tell YouTube. I know y'all can buy it for a low price. Price. I know y'all can buy it for a low price, but y'all can watch it for too, I'm just saying. Anyway, if you enjoyed this Korean craze, perhaps you'll also enjoy I Saw the Devil as well, a film about a special agent hunting down a serial killer. Thanks for watching. Spooky out!